more of a more of a lifelong passion than it is a job or anything else like that. You, if you're in it to make a quick buck and just get out, then you know, good luck to that person. I'd say, to me, in terms of making pieces, I think the ball only started rolling a few years ago, and a career in art means building towards something. When it comes to marketing your own product and getting interest out there for your product, you need to do it yourself. And it, when it comes to making a better piece, I like to hold control over a lot of the creative aspects. And I think when it's diluted by a lot of too many, when too many people's visions get into the piece or other visions in general, like if you're more worried about selling the piece than you are of making uh, interesting work, then that can, in my mind, hinder the work. So I try to avoid those situations which I've learned along the way it can be major pitfalls in the art world. I'm here blowing glass, borosilicate lamp working, in the process of making this piece that's not going so well. And I think it's about time I'm going to stop doing it and maybe try and make another one. Because I don't think this one's savable. Unfortunately, that's part of the glass game. Which is really bad, bro. I gotta start over. What time is it? This one's already feeling way better, so maybe it's a good thing that I'm trying to do another one. Why does it feel better? Well, because glass is a thing that it's not, you're not in full control of it. You're sort of dancing with the material. If you're not feeling into it, if you're feeling frustrated, impatient, anything like that will affect the glass. Any sort of impatient maneuver you make, any sort of rushing you do, so being pressed for time makes glass blowing about the most difficult thing in the whole world. You want to have a lot of time optimally to blow glass. You want to work on a project three or four times. You want to make several of the items before even one turns out. Most of the time you'll have cracking and you'll have unforeseen problems. That's what happened in the last one, it started cracking. It was very, very common, that always happens. Once, you, once the piece cracks in one spot, you're sort of chasing it. You're sort of chasing the cracks and you never, unless you get it just right, it's very, very difficult to get the piece back to where you ideally wanted it to be. Since I've been doing work with the ESAP group, I've done three shows now. Their goal is to put art into abandoned storefronts to try and beautify the downtown area here in Eugene. My main goal was to get the work out to people in Eugene to get a chance to look at it and to enjoy it and uh, see that I'm kind of a different artist coming from a whole different area of work blending because I know glass blend is really popular in this town and there are a lot of glass blowers. In fact, you couldn't swing a stick around here without hitting one. But the way that I look at the world is different. I want to show other glass blowers that I am a glass blower yet a much different take on it and that I have also combined drawing and painting into it as well and just a fundamental knowledge in art and art history. When I was making this series and I, like I told you about the different ideas and memories you have in your life being layers of your memory. I started to physically paint the layers. As I did that, I took the idea into a second realm where I turned the layers into, if you will, an even more layered aspect of geology and archaeology. 
where these things will represent strata underground. Well, I think any show, any art show, is when the viewer goes into it somewhat uninformed or when they're not really paying attention that well and they ask you the same questions over and over, and you sort of end up repeating your whole spiel about what the pieces are about, you repeat yourself, and it's sometimes discouraging because you feel like you just said that or you just told them that and you want to repeat it again. And it, I guess it comes down to, at that point in time, a failure for them to grasp the concept, or maybe a failure on my part to explain it good enough. And if you weren't there, then maybe the candle's a stand-in for you. Like the ethereal moment, the, the visceral, the life, the existential element, you know. Personally, uh, myself, I'm a writer instead. <laughs> sure. Feeling good. Feeling good. I'm feeling relieved. I'm glad that the speech part of it is over. There's a lot of people here. That's really good. So, it's cool. Seems like my name's ringing out a little bit. People are saying it. People are talking. People are liking the pieces a lot. So, it's very positive. It's very uh, uplifting. Well, I, I do think that there is a carefree nature to the work. I think that my ultimate goal is to make people smile and laugh and to question the lives that they're living. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. So what's for the future? I'm really excited. I feel there's a lot of big changes on the horizon. I think good things are on the way. A big step forward was just getting out there. And I feel really just open to the idea of uh, sharing my work with other people. I really enjoy that. Getting a chance to be an artist is it, a lot of work, don't get me wrong, but uh, I feel like it's just part of who I am. A lot of my time I spend reading books and enjoying nature, going on a walk with my beautiful dog, Sayla, the old lady girl. I know that nature is where I get a good part of my inspiration for working and for just being around in general, so I like to be out in nature walking and enjoying as much as I possibly can. The fact that we are so lucky and so, and I am so lucky to be able to make art with my time and, and people are able to enjoy it is the most important aspect of it and I think that's where the carefree nature comes about. I like to be easygoing, and I think it shows in the art. I think that the more you are wrapped up in the, in the strict nature of your rat race kind of life, the, the less you might be fulfilled, I feel. Yes. Congratulations.